الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters Whenever we listen to something futile that is a waste of time, we should actually turn away from it. If we don't, there will be a seed sown within our system that will germinate into a tree of sadness, a tree of something that is not beneficial, sometimes harmful. So remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the believers and about how important it is to stay away from that which is futile, that which is harmful and abusive etc etc there is a reason it is because Allah wants us to achieve long-term contentment short-term contentment we're looking this evening at surat al-qasas we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in verse number 55 of this surah he says regarding those who are good believers regarding those who have earned the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those whom he praises he says وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا اللَّغْوَ أَعْرَضُوا عَنْهُ وَقَالُوا لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا نَبْتَغِ الْجَاهِلِينَ When they hear a laghu, that which is futile, that which is senseless, that which has no benefit at all, they move away from it, they distance from it. The people who are engaging in bad, these good people distance from them. They move away from them. And what do they say? They say, Lana a'maluna walakum a'malukum. We have our deeds that we're going to be answerable to Allah for. You have your deeds that you're going to be answerable to Allah for. Salamun alaykum. Peace be upon you. We're giving you a good prayer. May Allah's peace be upon you. We don't want to follow and we don't want to be with those who are ignorant. Subhanallah. So Allah is telling you, if you want contentment, protect yourself from toxic people. There is a fine line between those who are toxic and those who need help and are willing to actually receive the help. So you can help people who are open to you helping them or you can try to help if you're a professional or you think you can help. But the moment you believe that this is going to affect me, walk away. Because not everyone is so strong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength to help people who are perhaps engaged in that which is futile so that they can transform into utilizing their time in a constructive way. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He tells this to us so beautifully. The term salamun alaykum depicts the fact that we are praying for those whom we have stayed away from. Someone is toxic, pray for them. Say a good word for them. Make dua for peace for them. A day will come when they will have that peace, perhaps through your dua and you will have double peace because when you pray for someone, the angels are making the same prayer for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I now move on to one of my favorite verses. Verse number 61 of Surah Al-Qasas, where Allah is telling us the difference between those who have conviction, those who are convinced about what they have been promised by Allah. And they know definitely that they are going to get what Allah has promised. They have no doubt and they are going to see it. The difference between them and others who perhaps Allah has thrown the worldly life to, but they've wasted their time on earth. Allah says the two are not a comparison. You cannot compare the two. I might not have things in this world, but I know I'm going to have in the hereafter. And I know that the promise of Allah will come to pass. And I am definitely going to get it. And that when I get it, it will be everlasting. So even if I have to struggle a little bit on earth, I'm okay, I'm content. I'm happy because I know where I'm going and I'm convinced about it. With conviction, you attain contentment. Remember that, my brothers and sisters. With conviction, you will attain contentment. When you're convinced about what Allah has promised you, you're definitely going to be content. But on the other hand, here is a person 
when we look at people sometimes who Allah has given a lot to on earth, there are some from amongst us who become depressed and sad. They start competing. That is no competition. It's not worth competing for. My brothers and sisters, guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very clearly. Is he whom we have given a promise to, the true promise to, and he is definitely going to get it and receive it, and he knows and he's convinced that he's going to get it, similar to the one whom we have given a little bit on earth to, we have given something to him on earth, and given him a life, and then on the day of Qiyamah, he's going to be from the losers, which one of the two is better? Would you rather have something here and not there? Or would you rather have something there, and you will still manage here? Subhanallah. May Allah keep us happy. Allah promised the believers that he will make them happy and he will give them contentment. He never ever promised them that he will give them sustenance and wealth so much more than they need. He says, I'll give you what you need. What's enough for you? You will have. Excess, I may give some, I may not give some. That is Allah. Be happy with what Allah has apportioned for you. You may not have the best spouse, but you have a good spouse. You may not have the best of, the, of vehicles, but you have a vehicle. You may not have the latest phone, but you have a phone. Subhanallah. Be happy and content with what Allah has given you. Because if you are right now and you are convinced about the hereafter, you have much more than those who have a lot materialistically in your presence on earth. So someone might have the best car, the latest home, the latest gadgets, the most wealth, the best of spouses, etc., etc. But if they lack that conviction in Allah, perhaps they have nothing in the hereafter. Allah says, you've used your coupons, now what? Now what do you want? But we don't become people who have lost all touch with this world. No. Allah created you in this world. Don't become someone who's lost complete touch with the world. You need to live in it. You need to work hard. You can't say, I'm not going to go to work because Allah's promised me Jannah and I'm just going to uh, you know, read Salah and Quran every day and that's it. No. You must earn a living because earning a living is a means of earning the pleasure of Allah. Allah wants you to earn sustenance when you make a dua and go out. And when you come back at the end of the day after having worked very hard and you've presented the food for your family members and for the others, you've earned it halal, Allah says, we will give you a great reward. And this is why it brings me straight through to the story of Qarun. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Qarun, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 77 of the same surah, Surah Al-Qasas, Allah says, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah is saying, what those people who were guiding Qarun were saying to him. He was a very wealthy man at the time of Musa alayhi salam. And Allah says to him, don't forget your portion on earth. Don't forget your portion on earth. Meaning you are allowed to earn, you must go out and earn. You would like a good life. It's not wrong to aim for a reasonably comfortable life or a little bit of comfort. It's not wrong to achieve things within the means that Allah has provided you. But don't forget Allah. So Allah says, لا تنسى نصيبك من الدنيا Don't forget your portion on earth. Strike the balance, right? وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ Do good to others just like Allah's done good to you. When I've got a million dollars, who did good to me? Allah. What am I going to do with the million dollars? Allah says, use it to, to, to do good to others. أَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ Just like Allah has done good to you, you do good to others. So when Allah gave you something, use that thing to give to others. You became a professional, you got a good field, you want contentment, use a little bit of it to serve others, to make others happy. 
when Allah has blessed you with something, use it to serve others as well. Subhanallah, you will achieve contentment. This is what Allah was reminding Qarun. You're going to amass this wealth. When are you going to use it? Subhanallah. Today we wait for people to do sadaqat on our behalf after our death. And we wait for people to do things, whether it be correct or wrong is a topic on its own. But why don't we do these deeds in our lives while we're alive? No one debates that. That is not debated at all. Why don't you drill the wells? Why don't you plant the trees? Why don't you do your sadaqa jariya? Why don't you spread knowledge? Why don't you give out to charities? Why don't you do a lot of good things? Your name and your family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. Don't wait for the day you die and expect people to read Quran on your behalf in whatever way they are doing when you haven't read it yourself. What is controversial you want for you and what is not controversial you actually don't even want it for yourself. It's actually strange how people who could afford Hajj sometimes have never been for the Hajj. And then they expect others after they've died to go and do it for them. And they haven't even left a wasiyah. They haven't even left any form of a request to say, if I die, someone should go. My brothers and sisters, spend what Allah has given you. When Allah gives you something, spend it. Don't forget what Allah has given you. Don't become haughty and arrogant. And Allah says, Ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. Don't use your blessing that Allah gave you to spread chaos and corruption on earth because that's not going to help you at all. My brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful example. We've been through so many days within this beautiful series known as contentment from revelation. And we've seen how Allah has guided us verse after verse to become content. The question is for you now. Are you going to follow what Allah has said? And are you going to achieve the contentment Allah has guaranteed? Or are you going to turn a blind eye? There are still so many chapters of the Quran that we will be covering at some stage. But for now, this series comes to an end. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from every one of us and to grant us true contentment in this world and absolute success of the hereafter. My brothers and sisters, make dua for forgiveness, not only for yourself, not only for me, but for all the ummah and for guidance for humanity at large. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب